Shimad Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Janmad Yasya Yatur Niviyad Itaratas Jati Suavigyas Varat. Janmad Yasya Yatam Vayar Itaratas Jati Suavigyas Varat. Tine Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Suraya. Tine Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanti Yat Suraya. Tejo Varimadam Yatavini Mayo Yatratri Sagumisha. Tejo Varimrida Jata Vinimayo Jatra Trisar Gumrisya Namnasvena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Namnasvena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O my Lord, Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead O all-pervading personality of Godhead I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I offer my respectful obeisances unto you I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes. And the primary cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the created universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And He is independent because there is no other cause beyond Him. And He is independent because there is no other cause beyond Him. Is He only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge? To the heart of Brahmaji. It's the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart the of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen of fire or land seen on water. Of water seen of fire or land seen of water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. They appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha. Dharma Projita Kaitravocha. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulan. Shivadam Tapo Trayvalanam Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Prayer Ishwaraha Kimva Prayer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material more. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam. Them compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva's maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam phalam. Sukumukad amrita javya samyutam. Sukumukad amrita javya samyutam. Pivata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pivata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho raska bhuvibhavukaha. Muhur aho raska bhuvibhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literature. Emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sugadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls, including liberated souls, Shambhatam Swakata Krishna, Shambhatam Swakata Krishna, 
Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana to hear about Krishna from the Bhagavatam to hear about Krishna from Bhagavatam to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita or to hear from him directly from through Bhagavad Gita is it self righteous activity is it self righteous activity for one who hears about Krishna and from who hears about Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee that constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preeshu badreshu. Nasta preeshu badreshu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke. Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki. Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. And this way, the devotee naturally develops. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, tadarajas tamo bhava, kama lo badayas chaye, kama lo badayas chaye, chaita itair anavidam, chaita itair anavidam, sitam sattve prasidati, sitam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manasu. Evam prasanna manasu. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogata. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Bhagavat tattva vigyanam. Sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. Understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante chasya karmani. Chidyante chasya karmani. Drusta evadmanishvari. Thus, bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of God. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of God. Therefore, only by becoming, only by hearing from Krishna. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Or from his devotees in Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 17, verse number 17. Dharma Uvacha. Dharma Uvacha. Etadva Panda. Etadva Pandavayanam Yuktam Artha Bhayam Bacha Yuktam Artha Bhayam Bacha Yesam Gunaganai Krishna Yesam Gunaganai Krishna Dot Yadu Bhagavan Krita Dot Yadu Bhagavan Krita Translation by Shri Prabhupada the personality of religion said, These words just spoken by you befit a person of the Pandava dynasty, captivated by the devotional qualities of the Pandavas. Even Lord Krishna, the personality of God, had performed duties as a messenger. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The assurances and challenges made by Maharaj Pariksit are never exaggerations of his real power. Maharaja, the Maharaja said that even the denizens of heaven could not escape his stringent government if they were violators of religious principles. He was not falsely proud, for a devotee of the Lord is equally as powerful as the Lord or sometimes more powerful by His grace, meaning the Lord's grace, and any promise 
made by a devotee, though it may be ordinarily very difficult to fulfill, is properly executed by the grace of the Lord. The Pandavas, by their unalloyed devotional service and full surrender unto the Lord, made it possible for the Lord to become a chariot driver or sometimes their letter messenger. Such duties executed by the Lord for his devotee are always very pleasing to the Lord because the Lord wants to render service to his unalloyed devotee whose life has no other engagement than to serve the Lord with full love and devotion. Maharaj Pariksit, grandson of Arjuna, the celebrated friendly servitor of the Lord, was a pure devotee of the Lord like his grandfather. And therefore, the Lord was always, uh, and therefore, the Lord was always with him, even from the time when he was helplessly lying in the womb of his mother and was attacked by the blazing Brahmastra weapon of Aswatthama. A devotee is always under the protection of the Lord. And therefore, the assurance of protection by Maharaj Pariksit could never be without meaning. The personality of religion accepted this fact and thus thanked the king for his being true to his, to his exalted position. Sila Prabhupada ki So, the empowerment that a devotee receives by engaging in pure devotional service is unimaginable. We don't realize, I've said this before, we don't realize the potential that we have. Prabhupada says in Chaitanya Charitamrita that the potential of the jiva is to become even more powerful than the sun. Can you imagine that? Even more powerful than the sun. So, we have a very, very low understanding of what we're actually capable of. And therefore, it's very important to regularly hear Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to become aware of where we can actually, or what we can actually achieve. And the highest goal, of course, is constant association with Krishna. It doesn't matter whether it's in the material world or in the spiritual world, because wherever Krishna is, that's, that's where Vaikuntha is. And, and his devotees are there also. So that, that means it doesn't matter between the material world or the spiritual world. So uh, Prabhupada says, only a person who is fully in Krishna consciousness can be said to be engaged in welfare work for all living entities. So what is real welfare? Real welfare is helping one be liberated from the cycle of birth and death and going back to Godhead. That's the real wealth. That's the real, um, let's say, um, welfare work. So rather than just put a Band-Aid on a wound, wound or, or on a wound, it's better to uh, heal it completely so that there's no trace of the wound. So that complete healing, that's called Krishna consciousness. And what is the sickness that we all have? We're attracted to Maya. And the more we're attracted to Maya, the more we forget Krishna. And, and then we, we attempt to control Maya. But it's impossible to control her. She's a divine personality and she has divine powers. So therefore, in that illusory state, we just get more and more entangled in the material world. And in the end, we get old, we get sick, and we die. And we're confused. Why doesn't Maya get sick, get old, and die? Right? Because she's a devotee of the Lord. And uh, she's simply carrying out the order of the Lord. <clears throat> OK, so the sufferings of our humanity are due to forgetfulness of Krishna as the supreme enjoyer, the supreme proprietor, and the supreme friend. Bhaktaram Yagatapasam Sarvaloka Maheshram. Suridam Sarvadbhutanam Yatvamam Santim Richati. So if you know these three things, you attain peace. And if you have peace, you'll have happiness. And 
if you have happiness, you will not be hankering all the time for different types of uh, temporary pleasures because you have happiness already. You don't have to f seek it in any other way. It's like if you have money, you're not worrying about making money. Right? And therefore, there's a very interesting verse in Bhagavad Gita that says, <clears throat> Nasti buddhir ayuktasya, nacha yuktasya bhavana, nacha bhavya taksantir, asantasya kutasukam. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind, without which there's no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? So, you see, this is a... Uh, uh, what you would call a, uh, a progression. Uh, the, but the progression doesn't start until you develop some relationship with Krishna. So basically people who ignore trying to develop a relationship with Krishna, they're always stuck. They're always in the same place. They don't really progress. And we see that. Like I, I remember first time I came to Seattle, I was picked up by this uh, couple. And they were not initiated, but they considered themselves devotees. And they took me to uh, the Seattle Center for uh, the Northwest Folklife Festival. And, and then later on, we went to the temple. So. Fast forward to today, uh, these people are doing exactly the same thing they did almost 30 years ago. They haven't, I've made a little, uh, one of them has made some spiritual progress. The other one has made no spiritual progress. And they do the same thing, even today. You know, they go to the Northwest Folklife Festival and distribute some books. And uh, so the point is, they haven't become firmly established in the progressive path. Because Krishna consciousness is progressive. Things get better and better as you get better and better of uh, chanting and following. Now this chanting is extremely important, utmost importance. It cannot be emphasized enough. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read a few things that Prabhupada has written about chanting. Because it's the one thing that Lord Chaitanya emphasized more than anything else. Uh, and he said, let's see here. One second. He he uh, Prabhupada is over and over emphasizing the power of the holy name. And that's an extremely important thing. So if we look at the 8th chapter, 14th verse, let's take a look at that first. 8th chapter, 14th verse, where it says, Ananya Chaita Satatam Yum Mam Smarati Nityasa Tashyaham Sulabha Parta Nitya Yuktasya Yogina. For one who's always, who always remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. Okay, so that's a very important verse, a chapter 14th verse. And in near the end of the purport, it's a long purport, Prabhupada says, The pure devotee is always constantly engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord and cannot forget the Supreme Lord. And so for him, the Lord is easily attained. A pure devotee cannot forget the Supreme Lord for a moment. And similarly, the Supreme Lord cannot forget his pure devotee for a moment. 
This is the great blessing of the Krishna consciousness process of chanting the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, so, but that's not all. Prabhupada emphasizes the same thing again. Ninth chapter, 25th verse, where he says in the purport, it says, ninth chapter, 25th verse, it is easy to understand through this important verse that if simply Worshipping the demigods, one can achieve the heavenly planets, or by worshipping the pitas, achieve the pita planets, or by practicing the black arts, achieve the ghostly planets, why can a pure devotee not achieve the planet of Krishna or Vishnu? Unfortunately, many people have no information of these sublime planets where Krishna and Vishnu live. And because they do not know of them, they fall down. Uh, let's see, one second, what was I going to read here? The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore distributing sublime information to the entire human society to the effect that simply chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, one can become perfect in this life and go back home, back to God. This is our message. Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, we can go back to Godhead in this lifetime. So, there are many, many other places where he emphasizes this. Let's see, another one. Whenever something is emphasized over and over again, that means it is of utmost importance. Utmost importance. <clears throat> So then in ninth chapter again, Krishna said, uh, no, no, let's see, the tenth chapter, Satam kirtiyan tamam jitam tas chajrita vataha namasyan tas chamam bhakta nitya yukta upasate. And now it's ninth chapter. Yeah, ninth chapter, 14th verse. Okay, so what, did, what does he say? Always chanting my glories, Endeavoring with great determination, bowing down before me, these great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. So in the purport, the symptom of a devotee is, is, is and in the verse also, is explained. And Prabhupada says, the Mahatma is always engaged in different activities of devotional service as described in the Srimad Bhagavatam hearing and chanting about Vishnu, not a demigod or human being. That devotion, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam, remembering him, that, it says that is devotion, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu and Smaranam, remembering him. Such a Mahatma has firm determination to achieve at the ultimate end the association of the Supreme Lord in any of the five transcendental rasas. To achieve that success, he engages all activities, mental, bodily, and vocal, everything in the service of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, that is called full Krishna consciousness. And the easy way to do that is always chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So, this is the great blessing of the Maha Mantra. Kalaya dosa nide rajan astihi eka mahatmana kirtanan eva kirtanasya mukta sangha shijayate. In this age of Kali, there are many, many uh, unfavorable things. But there's one great thing, or the greatest thing. Simply by chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can easily attain liberation from the cycle of birth and death. So the, the power and the blessing of the holy name is explained over and over again in many different places and many different scriptures, especially Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So we should take this hint 
Prabhupada is giving a hint, but a big hint. Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Now, do you actually become happy? If you chant purely, yes. You become very happy. You become fully satisfied. Just like when you're eating, you're hungry, and you start eating, with every bite, you become more and more satisfied until you're full. Right? So in the same way, uh, if you take to the chanting, gradually you'll become more and more satisfied until you're completely uh, not attached to, uh, to any type of mundane material enjoyment, but only your real joy, joy is chanting, and especially in the company of devotees. So this is the uh, most auspicious activity. And Krishna says, the Supreme Personality of God had said, Son of Prita, a transcendentalist, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. So, if we take this chanting seriously, just like Lord Chaitanya was once cursed by a brahmana. And the brahmana broke his, his, uh, his uh, Gayatri uh, thread and cursed the Lord. Usually that's like an that's a irrevocable co curse in, in acts. So what measures did Krishna take, uh, did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take? Nothing. He just continued doing what he was doing all the time, chanting Hare Krishna. And in the purport to that uh, episode, Prabhupada says that uh, if you are always chanting, then you, no, no curse can affect you. Now, there are experts at cursing people, especially in India. You can pay someone to curse someone you don't like. You know about that? <laughs> you know about that? No, it's yeah. They, they do it in Africa also, all the time. Cursing. Cursing. It's a traditional thing. It's a traditional thing. You know about that, bro? No. Oh, I'm glad you don't know about it. <laughs> Anybody else know it? You know about that? No. Yes, it happens a lot in India. And then when you feel as if you're cursed, you you go to some pundit and he does uh, uh, he does sani puja, <laughs> right? You know about sani puja, yeah. One time a man came here and said, Prabhu, uh, I've been cursed. <laughs> I said, okay. That's I very good. Huh? <laughs> you should have said very good. No, no, I didn't want to say it. No, then he would think I was one of the guys that cursed him. <laughs> and I said, okay, is there any way I can help you? He said, yeah, I want you to take this and then uh, take it somewhere and burn it. So he gave me these things that were uh, in, in, done by the pundit. Uh, you know, there's, there's several different things. You know, you have the red kumkum <laughs> powder, and then you have the beetle, beetle leaves, and then you have a bunch of things, right? You know, some money and other things, and it's, it's wrapped up, you know. And I said, uh, he said, uh, you, you're a pundit, so you know how to take care of it. I said, well, <laughs> I said, I, I'm not sure if I'm a pundit, and I'm definitely sure I don't know how to take care of it. <laughs> He said, no, no, you take this. I can't hold on to it anymore. You know? <laughs> so he gave it to me, and uh, I took it somewhere. I think it was in Bellevue somewhere in the parking lot. I just dropped it somewhere. <laughs> forgot about it and walked away. <laughs> but another time, a devotee came to me. He's, he's, he's originally from Fiji. They do a lot of cursing in Fiji, a lot. <laughs> And he said, Prabhu, I, I've been cursed, and uh, it's terrible. I don't know what to do. You, you have to help me. I said, well, I, I mean, I've never done this before. He said, no, no, you can. You know what to do, Prabhu. You know. <laughs> I, I said, okay. <laughs> so I, I did the Narayana Kavacha, right? 
And I did it, you know, step by step, very slowly. You know, he was, he was sitting and I was saying the mantras. And I said, you touch this part of your body, you touch that part of his body, this thing, say this word, and so forth. And then uh, we sat down together also and chanted Hare Krishna for a long time, you know. And after that, I think it took about two hours. After that, I said, Prabhu, I feel as if the curse has gone away. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I hope so, Prabhu. I said, I said who cursed you? Oh, it's a member of my family, Prabhu. You know. anyway, even till today, he come, whenever he sees me, he's, he remembers that. Right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it worked or not, but you know, he says it worked. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's very common, Maharaj, in India. That's how the Brahmin... Oh, no, no. Oh I said it's very common in uh, India. Uh, people generally, that's how the Brahmins are actually. They make money. They make money because, yeah. and they put the fear of the. Okay, you do this, then this will happen. They might even be paying the people that curse. Yeah. <laughs> to get more customers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it's. I mean, Fiji, big time. A lot of people in Africa is huge. The cursing, you know, and actually the Muslims also do it. They, sometimes at the end of their uh, namas, they'll have like an, a half an hour of cursing. Now they don't use bad words. I mean, they they cursing people, you know. And they said, you know, we hope they go blind. We hope their wife has an abortion. We hope this. We hope that. You know, and they they say the names of the people. So they usually do it against America and Trump and things yeah. like that. You know. So uh, it's nothing new. In fact, my mother, who was at one time a Muslim and, uh, because she had been kidnapped, and uh, sometimes when she'd get really angry, she'd go into a, a, a series of uh, curses, right? And uh, in, in uh, the Turkish language, it's called Nahlet. You know, and she would say, Nahlet. And then, then say the name of someone, and not let. Like yeah. That. So it's it's a common thing around the world. Yeah. Of course, what, when Lord Chaitanya was cursed by the Brahmin who actually broke his Brahmin thread, it's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Lord Chaitanya just continued chanting Hare Krishna, and Prabhupada there says that you know a devotee is not uh, affected by the curse as long as he's following the rules and regulations and chanting. Yes. Well, Maharaj, uh, it, is, it is said the curse is irreversible. It's irreversible. irreversible. So once you curse, you curse. It has to take an effect. Yes. So why are people trying to counteract it? It shouldn't work. It shouldn't. Because it's irreversible once the curse is. Uh, yeah, but. Um, like, for example, I'll give you one example now. Uh -huh. uh, when the uh, sons of the king of Kashi, who was killed by Krishna, right, they vowed to get revenge on Krishna. So they hired brahmanas that did a yagya to create a demon that would kill Krishna. And a demon came out. His name was Dakshinagni. He was a fire demon, right? And they ordered him to go to Dwarka, destroy the whole city of Dwarka, and kill Krishna. So this demon came, and he was a huge demon. It was like, he, he went right up to the sky. That's how big he was. And he was full of fire. And all the residents of uh, Dwarka freaked out completely. They came running to Krishna. Krishna at that time was playing chess. And uh, they were screaming, help us, you know, you know, the fire is coming, you know, we're all going to die. And Krishna said, wait a minute, I have to finish making this move, you know, chess move. <laughs> he wasn't at all disturbed, you know. And then Krishna uh, 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 expanded the Narayana, uh, Narayana Vacha, not the Narayana Vacha, not, not the Narayana weapon, which is a cold weapon. So the fire weapon was coming. So absolute cold weapon came out, and it's actual personality. And the cold weapon stopped the fire weapon. 
Narana Kavacha, okay, yeah. And uh, so now, because Dakshinagni could not achieve its goal, his goal, he went back and killed the sons of uh, the king of Kashi and the Brahmins that performed the sacrifice. So even though it's an impenetrable or it's an invincible uh, you know, curse, if it cannot achieve its goal, then it goes back and kills the people that called, called them or, or ordered them to do it. Yeah, it has to kill somebody. Yeah. So if it cannot reach the goal, it comes back and kills the others. Well, in this sense, maybe. In this sense that, you know, if you're cursed, just like this person from Fiji came to see me, he said, probably you got to help me. I'm in big trouble. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, most, most of the time we just chanted Hare Krishna. And I did the Naran Kavacho, but we just chanted. And uh, he was, uh, he f felt as if the curse went away. You know? So it's only when people are in trouble that they seek help. And if they seek help from a devotee, what's the devotee going to say? Chant Hare Krishna. Right? We don't have any weapon or any, we, don't, we don't know a counter curse. We just chant Hare Krishna. Sincerely. If what? If they like him, yes, yes. Yes, exactly. Subhuti Rai. First, there was melted iron. First, right, right, okay. And then, and then, and then yeah, you can say it. No. Yeah, no, it's okay. Go ahead. So, only Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when, when actually went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then uh, it's about prayastita, about atonement, to atone for, for whatever you know, sinful acts or. Uh, yeah, whatever sinful act you committed. So you have to atone for it. I mean, they'd be a little different from, from the curse, obviously. But well, what, no, what he said was, look, you, you give up your family, and you go to Vrindavan, and you serve the devotees. So he went to Vrindavan, gave up his family, mm -hmm. but he did, felt so contaminated he didn't go inside Vrindavan. He stayed in the outskirts. And whoever came, mostly a lot of Bengalis were coming, mm. and they like, they don't like rotis, like the North Indians. So they like rice. So he got very nice rice. And uh, they like mustard oil for massages. So they, he would give them massage, uh, mustard oil and very first class rice. And, and uh, you know, he was not really cursed. He was forced to become a Muslim. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Because a Muslim king threw water on him, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, is it so and, and there was no way that he could reverse that, uh, right. be, according to the fanatical Hindus. He, that was it. He was, he was going to be a Muslim the rest of his life, just because some Muslims threw water on him. You know? But Lord Chaitanya said, you give up your family, you go to Vrindavan, you serve the devotees, chant Hare Krishna. And, you know, Subhuti Rai did that, and, and, you know, he attained perfection. So, <laughs> so in that sense... <laughs> Uh, being is good, being cursed. <laughs> well, it, it depends what advice you get. If you go to the the, the Hindu pundit, you know, do sunny puja and other things, and that only c continues the curse. <laughs> it doesn't get rid of it. It makes, just makes it worse. Hindu yeah. pundit have solutions to all the problems. <laughs> <laughs> what? They have a solution. They have solutions to all the problems. What no, the they problems have a mantra for every. Something. They have a mantra for everything. Yes. One time I invited this uh, pundit from Bothell Temple. Before there was a Bothell Temple, but he was one of the people that helped open it. And he came to do something in, in our temple. And at one point he had this book with him, you know, a big book or, or a loose-leaf book. 
At one point, he started bragging about it. I have a mantra for everything. You just yeah. ask me anything, I have a mantra for it. You know? <laughs> A nice man, you know, he died, you know, but it was a very nice man. But, you know, it's a hodgepodge, complete hodgepodge. You know. So, yeah. Well, we don't, we have a mantra for everything. It's Jani Hare Krishna. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what we change. Yes. Haribo. But then, but then, sorry, um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it's still like uh, we have several instances in the, in Shastra, uh, the, the, the Munis, when they curse somebody, it's a benediction like, King Indraduna was cursed by Augusta Muni, and he became elephant. You know that story? And uh, so many instances are there. Uh, yeah, I mean, Tulsi Devi was cursed. Right. Don't yeah, it. yeah, exactly. But he said that when, when Nadam, now we're singing this month, uh, Nala Kuvera and yeah. Mani Griva, they were cursed. They were cursed by Sinada Muni. But, so the Siddhanta is that. The curse of uh, Sadhu actually is a blessing in disguise. Yes. Yeah. I always curse people to, to become Krishna conscious. <laughs> <laughs> and also another curse was Abalochi Tana Mahaprabhu. I think it was said that he, the, he was cursed by Brahmin saying, I, I don't know if it's the same, same case, but um, he was cursed that he would never stay in household, household life. Oh, that was a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> For ordinary people. Well, Narada Muni is cursed. No, yeah, exactly. But never stay in one place more than three days. Yeah, right. yeah. So actually, the cursing, as you mentioned, is mm-hmm. very, very common. Uh, if somebody gets uh, angry or uh, an enemy, they, they will curse. Okay, this will happen to you. This will happen to you. Then, on the best on that, like, you will be like a childless or something like that. You so what? Child. Means childless, like you won't have child in your life or something. If somebody get angry and they will curse like that, but then with a period of time there is a proverb um, got developed. I don't know when how old that proverb was, but in it's in Marathi. I don't know. I will translate. Maybe it's called "Kavala cha shapane gai maratnai." That means by the curse of crow, cows won't die or something like that. So it don't affect the cows. So you need to be that powerful for your curse to be effective. So, just cursing so doesn't crow matter. Crow is not powerful. Sorry, crow. Crow is not. So in in that sense, crow is like a, always like a something that's a lower grade or something like that. Crow is the. I mean, he doesn't have the tejas. Yeah, he he, he, he considered to be shot. a shudra. Crow is kind of like is the, the lowest uh, bird or some lowest animal. What you call? So with you cannot cursed for cow, which is at the highest level, and crow is at the very lowest level. So, even if, so, cows don't get killed because of the curse of crow, something like that. So, you need to be <laughs> very powerful so for your curse to be effective on somebody else or affect somebody else. Yeah, that's, you, that's what the proverb was. Usually the Brahmana's curse is considered to be the most powerful. Yeah. yeah. But then, yeah, the person should be that much powerful. You, you, anybody can just go and curse, it doesn't matter. That's what. <laughs> in fact, traditionally, and in, uh, according to Vedas, the Brahmin, they have the power to curse. Yeah. Right. To the example, Shungi, that boy, Brahmin, yeah. curse. Shringi, yeah. yeah. The power. Yeah, yeah. So not everybody really can curse. Yeah, yeah, that is what I'm saying. The point was that that that's pro- proverb is very. Uh, yeah. So somebody is fighting, and they said, okay, they will ignore. Whatever you say is fine. Because, and they will say, okay. Because you won't die. Whatever you say, even I wouldn't be well, affected. The, the Brahmin is the power, and their curse actually is blessing in disguise. Yeah. The true Brahmin, even the true Brahmin or Vaishnava, whatever, the curse, you like the example of the, the sages, that's the morning. Yeah, correct. You need to be that yeah. disguise. The curse is always blessing in disguise. Yeah, if you're a person of dignity and that's, that's then only it will affect you otherwise. Haribo. Oh, good. Yes, Prabhupada. One question.